Alrighty, so we're continuing part C, number three part of 1996 free response question. And we're going to be looking at, we've done series circuits in part A, we've done parallel circuits in part B. Now we're going to bop it bop, put it all together in part C with this combination circuit. And we're going to learn how to collapse circuits and work on the highest level. We need to work on the AP Physics 1 exam. So let's just, I'm going to redraw this circuit so you can see another way of viewing it. Um, so let's kind of like redraw it real quickly on the left here. And you don't have to do this, but I just wanted you to see it for a second. So here we have our two cells that they've drawn, making up our 12 volt battery. And then if you were to draw it like this, if you were to split it here, and then do your 100 ohm there, and then do two resistors in series there, and come back together, and go, there's your 10 ohm, and go back to your battery. So you have your 10 ohm there, and your 20, and your 30 there. That's exactly the same thing. It doesn't look quite the same, but you need to open your mind, expand your mind, to the point where you can see that, yeah, that's the same thing as what they've drawn over here. Um, it, it's also the same thing um, if I were to take this 10 ohm out and, you know, just draw it, just draw it down here. I could draw it. Actually, they, they've already done that. So let me just do it right here and then bring all that back around. That's the exact same thing. You know, don't let those corners mess you up where they have those right angle corners. Um, look at the splits and look at what's going on before and after the splits or the junctions, as we, as we say. And so let's play with this a little bit. First of all, what are they asking us to do? Determine the following for this circuit. The current in the 10 ohm, in the 10 ohm resistor. All right, well, let's name our resistors the same way we've been naming them so far. And we named them R1234 in the, in the order from the greatest resistance to the least. And so R1 would be living here at the top, and so we'll put an R1 here just to label that 100. R2 would be this 30 ohm resistor, and R3 would be this 20 ohm, and then R4, the least resistance resistor, would be the 10 ohm, R4, right there. So we've got our resistors labeled. Now what they're secretly asking you in uh, the current in the 10 ohm resistor, they're secretly asking you to find the total current that's running because all of the current, some of the current's going to split when it gets to this junction and some of it's going to take this high road and some of it's going to take this low road. But then when they get to this other junction, they're going to come back together and all of it's going to go then through that 10 ohm resistor. So they're secretly asking you what is the total current in this circuit. Um, and so just to label these currents that we've been doing, um, in blue here, all the current would come out of the positive, and then some of it would take the low road, whoop, some of it would take the high road, whoop, and then they'd recombine right there, and then all of it would go back into the battery. And that's your flow of your positive conventional current. Remember that I like to be current, and I like to be positive. And so that personal rule helps you with your physics. All right, well, that's a little ugly, so I'm going to erase that off of my circuit and just know that in my mind, in my heart, in my soul. <laughs> All right, let's do, maybe, maybe we can go ahead and do a, a ver chart, and we can then find the total current, and we'll be able to fill this in. So let's do a ver chart. So then let's use this navy blue that we've been using. Let's do the ver chart. Let's squeeze it in over here on the far right. And so then get set up. So we have a row for each resistor, R1, R2, R3, R4, and the total row. Loop, whoop, 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 whoop. Get those rows. And then do V equals I times R. Get some Ohm's law there. And then do a separate column for your power to reserve for later. So we can find the, we can rank them by brightness if we wanted to. And then fill, just get those columns there. All right, nice and set up. And so let's get our totals where we can. So we have a total voltage there of 12 volts. That's our EMF from the battery. And let's get all the resistances. So R1 is 100 ohms. R2 is 30 ohms. 
R3 is 20 ohms, and R4 is 10 ohms. And now the next strategy is to always get the equivalent resistance, the total resistance. But the problem here is that we are wired in combination of series and parallel. And so we're going to have to do what I call collapsing the circuit. So when you look at the circuit, you're going to have to see it differently. You're going to have to see it as an extended collapsible thing. And so just to kind of like give you a view of that, let's just see that you're going to collapse R2 and R3 so they act like one resistor that we call R2,3, R2,3. And then you're going to collapse the two parallel branches with R1 and R2,3 so they act like one big resistor that's R1,2,3. And then that's going to be in series with R4. And so just to kind of draw that a little bit, let's, that's a little messy. So let's kind of draw what I'm seeing in my imagination. And so I'm going to do that on the left over here. And let's use red. So the first collapse is to collapse the branch that has two resistors in series, to collapse R3 and R2, so they act like R2, 3. And so that would look like that would look like this. So we have our battery. Uh, okay, that's that's no, no, no. Boop. Long short, long short. Don't make it look like a capacitor with two of the same same size. And then la la la. And so then split it, and we have R1 there. But then R2 and R3 are going to act like one together, and we call it R2 comma three. And since they're in series, their total resistance is going to be, they're going to act like a 50 ohm resistor. The 20 ohms plus the 30 ohms is going to combine and be 20 plus 30. It's going to be 50. R1 is still at 100 ohms. And then you run that and you have your 10. I'm going to need more space. So I'm going to make that a little smaller. So then we run that back here. And we have our R4, which we have done nothing to yet. And that was still 10 ohms. Now let's collapse it again. So I'm going to go down now. And so then draw your battery again. And let's collapse the parallel branches. So they act like just one resistor that's in series with the R4. So there's R4 still. That's still 10 ohms. But this is going to be... R1, comma 2, comma 3, R1, 2, 3. In R1, 2, 3, we have to use our parallel rules. So we're going to have to add inversely. So we're going to have to do 1 over R1, which is 1 over 100 ohms, plus 1 over R2, 3, which is 1 over 50 ohms, and then take the inverse of that. And so we have to get common denominators, which can use 100. So we have 1 100th plus two one hundredths, and that's going to give us one one hundredth plus two one hundredths, again to the negative one power. That's going to be three one hundredths, and then take it to the negative one power, so then that's going to end up being one hundred over three, which is going to be thirty-three and a third, or thirty-three point three repeating, and we'll just leave it as thirty-three point three ohms. And then you can collapse it one more time. You can put the R123 together with the R4 to get your final total resistance. And so let's kind of draw that here. Real simple. Battery. And it's acting like just one resistor on that battery. And that's R1234. Or the equivalent resistance of the whole thing, REQ. And since R123 is in series with R4, you would just add those two values together. So you'd have 33.3 ohms plus 10 ohms, and you would get 33.3 ohms plus 10 ohms, and you would get 43.3 ohms. And so that is the total resistance of this whole circuit. And you can't just try to add them all together or add them all inversely because they're in combinations there. So you kind of have to collapse the circuit there. And your strategy going forward is you're going to, if you have two resistors in series on a parallel branch, collapse them together. Then once you have 
the equivalent of single resistors in parallel with each other, then collapse those parallel branches, and then collapse everything that's left in series together. So work on the parallel branches first, and then once you've got the whole circuit in a series of things, then you can just add them together. Yeah, Andrew? Yeah, go ahead, bud. So now I can put that 43.3 ohms into my VIR chart. 43.3 ohms. And now I've done the hardest work, really. Now I've done that whole collapse in the circuit, the hardest part of combination circuits, getting that total resistance. Now I can just use VIR to get the rest of this thing. So let's go ahead and start doing that. So I have um, 12 divided by 43.3 will give me the total current running. So 12 divided by 43.3 is going to be 0.277. I'll just uh, zero point, I'll just take it out to 0.277. That's fine. Amps. And then we ask ourselves, self, who is going to experience that all that current? Is there any resistor, R1, 2, or 3, or 4, that's going to have all of the current flowing through it? Do you see any resistor that will, that will experience all of it? Michael, you look like you do. Yeah. So we can then take that total resistance and write it in place uh, in the R4 column, or R4 uh, row. 0 0.277 amps are going to be going through R4, which then unlocks the voltage drop across R4, because we can just multiply 0.277 times 10. It's going to be 2.77 volts are going to drop across R4. Now, before we go any further, I just want to point out that on the AP exam, you're being timed, and you need to work as quickly as possible, and you would actually be done um, at this point, because the question says, what's the current in the 10 ohm resistor? And the 10 ohm resistor is what we're calling R4. And so we just found that um, the current in the 10 ohm resistor, we could call I4, and that was 0 0.277 amps. And so you just be done. If they say determine, you just want to find it and then move on. You don't even have to show work. Although we have a bunch of work for finding that total resistance above, and then we have a vert chart that represents some work as well.